I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light On, Light Through, episode 194, my review of The Many Saints of Newark, the new Sopranos movie. Well, I said yesterday that I'd be back soon with another episode of Light On, Light Through, and here I am the very next day. You know, this fall of 2021 is shaping up as a mini golden age of television. The Foundation series and now the Many Saints of Newark, and there'll be much more coming up in the weeks and months ahead, and I'll be reviewing as many of these gems of television as I can. So, thinking about The Sopranos... After all these years, 21 or 14, and depending upon whether you count from the beginning or the end of the series, The Sopranos is arguably still the best series ever on any kind of television screen. What's beyond argument, I'd say, though, is that The Sopranos certainly started it all and opened the gates, paved the way, for all the great television that ensued on cable and streaming screens. It certainly changed my life, all for the better, not only as a viewer, but a media scholar thinking and writing about television. The late David Lavery asked me to write an essay about The Sopranos just a few years into the series for an anthology he was putting together. The result was, I wrote a little essay called Naked Bodies, Three Showings a Week, No Commercials, The Sopranos as a Nuts and Bolts Triumph of Non-Network TV. It was published in the anthology This Thing of Ours, Investigating the Sopranos, published by Columbia University Press and Wallflower Press in 2002. Well, David's next good idea was to organize a conference on the Sopranos, and I did do that at Fordham University with David and Douglas Howard's help back in 2008. And lots of important things came out of that conference, including a nice long interview with Dominic Chianese and another anthology, The Essential Sopranos, chock full of essays, including my essay, The Sopranos and the Closure Junkies. That was published by the University of Kentucky Press in 2011. And just for good measure, I was interviewed for Defining a Landmark, a documentary on The Sopranos, included in The Sopranos, the complete series. That was brought out by HBO on Blu-ray, a really magnificent package in 2014. All right, so now that we've got my creds out of the way, what about the movie? Well... With The Many Saints of Newark, just up on HBO Max for the month of October, that 2014 package is no longer complete. The two-hour movie thus had everything to lose for David Chase if it didn't live up to the extraordinary series to which it has the temerity of being a prequel. Anything short of loving it would have made it a disappointment. And I saw it late last night, and I loved it for lots of reasons. One of the great joys in seeing a prequel is getting to know the younger selves of characters you came to know and prize in their primary presentations. Michael Gandolfini was an inspired choice to play Tony Soprano as a teenager. Not only did Michael look and sound like the adult Tony played by his father, James Gandolfini, but Michael had a perfect presentation of lines, that mix of mischief and disappointment, and the beginning of that short fuse to anger that animated his father. 
And Michael Gandolfini is by no means the only actor who delivered memorably recognizable performances in The Many Saints of Newark. Among my favorites are Joe Magaro, whose young Silvio not only had the dupee, of course, but had the scowl and literally walk the walk, as well as talk the talk. The same for Corey Stahl as Uncle June. Not the toupee, of course, but in every way the bespectacled uncle of Tony. Bespectacled and troubled. And Vera Farmiga was so convincing as Livia, the intensity of her gaze, the angle of her head, she was recognizable as Tony's mother before anyone in the movie spoke her name. Now as to the plot, it was strong, believable, and fleshed out in classic Sopranos detail. And there's a stunning revelation at the end, which I won't say anything about except it was thoroughly plausible, given what we know of the character in later life on The Sopranos. I'll also mention that the movie was studded with gems of fine touches, like when baby Christopher Multisante cried when he sees Tony as a pouty young boy, played by William Ludwig, and an old biddy remarks that some people think that newborns have knowledge of, quote, the other side, unquote. And of course, as Christopher, in a narration from the grave, reminds us earlier in the film, Tony killed Christopher. It was also a nice touch saving the iconic Woke Up This Morning. Woke Up This Morning. Oh, what a great song for the closing rather than the opening of the movie since the song was an entree to The Sopranos, the series. So here's my recommendation. If you've seen The Sopranos, see The Many Saints of Newark you'll enjoy it immensely. If you haven't seen The Sopranos, well, see the entire series, then see the prequel movie. You'll enjoy it immensely. The Light on Light Through podcast. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review of The Many Saints of Newark. I'll be back here soon with another review, another commentary, who knows? And hey, if you'd like to see some of those essays that I mentioned earlier in this podcast, you'll find links to them in the show notes to this episode of Light On, Light Through. Just go to lightonlightthrough.com. That's L-I-G-H-T-O-N, L-I-G-H-T-T-H-R-O-U-G-H.com. In the meantime, stay safe, stay well, and enjoy. Athens, 2042 A.D. She ripped the paper in half then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left, again, into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson still codes about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries. 